Hey, what's up, everybody? It's David McGill. And in this video, I want to talk about parking your truck, so whether it be a semi truck, box truck, high shot truck, trailer, all of that good stuff. And this video is inspired by a conversation that I had with a client where we were talking about parking, like places to park his truck, his new truck. And I got a funny story. Well, not so funny, but um, an interesting story nonetheless. So when I first got my very first truck, um, I secured parking at a, at a truck parking spot where, you know, it, it's, it was gated. Um, you need a code to get into the gate. There's cameras everywhere. Um, sometimes there's even, you know, police um, sitting in a yard, you know, kind of patrolling the area. And at the time, there was a chain of grocery stores in the city that had closed. So a lot of the, you know, their locations were just, you know, were just vacant. Uh, so one of my drivers, he, uh, we, we talked and he convinced me to park the truck at one of these abandoned grocery stores because at his at his last job, you know, this is where where they were parking. It was closer to his house. So it was, you know, easier for him to get up and get to run the loads. Now, one night, this was probably, I think it was a Saturday night. Um me and my girlfriend, we were we were in the area. So we just stopped by the truck because I went to, you know, grab some of the some of the paperwork out of the truck that I needed. And I, I got the paperwork out and then I got out and I was just looking at the truck. And it was nighttime. It was probably about 10 o'clock, 1030 on a Saturday night. And the truck didn't look right, but I, I couldn't figure out what it was. So I was just I got out and I was just staring at the truck. And I, like, I couldn't figure out what it was that was looking kind of weird. And then my, my my girlfriend yelled out the window. She said, what happened to the tires? So I looked down at the truck and noticed that all of the rear tires, um, like they were all missing. And the truck was sitting on blocks, like some two by fours, like just a stack of them like all around the truck. The trailer was still there. None of those tires were disturbed, and uh, the front steer tires were still there. But you know, there was eight tires and rims were stolen from my first semi truck. Now it, it's 10:30 at night, and the load that I ran every day, my driver he uh he had to be at the truck ready to go at about 3:30 in the morning. So we had like five hours to go before my driver needs to be at the truck and there's no tires on the truck. So, you know, I, I went online and, and found some 24 hour um, tire places here in Indianapolis and I found one and I had to get a price on uh, eight tires and eight semi rims. Now the tires, I didn't get new tires, I, I got the recaps. Um, so if you're familiar with recaps, you know, they're not, um, they're like retreads. They're not like the virgin brand new tires. Um, and also I had to get, you know, the eight rims and the guy, um, who I was talking to on the phone, he pretty much says, oh yeah, I'll, I'll pick out the best eight that I can, that, that we have. Um, that came up to $2,235. So on a Saturday night, because I parked at this grocery store, this abandoned grocery store, um, it cost me $2,200 in replacement rims and tires on my semi. Now, the craziest part about that is while the truck was being parked at this abandoned grocery store, I was still paying for a secure parking spot at a truck yard. That's what I was I was really upset about because my first mind told me that's probably not a good idea. But, you know, just being new and trying to be a little flexible, um, you know, I went ahead and went that route and it ended up costing me $2,200. Now, 
the company actually they were able, they were actually able to get out there and you know change my tires or you know not change my tires but replace my tires um, before three thirty. So we made the pickup with no problem, but again it it cost me twenty two hundred dollars. So I don't recommend parking you know in public you know public places like that mall parking lots grocery stores any of that stuff because you, you know your equipment it could either be you know towed away or just you know just vandalized um, so I would say do not park you know in those kind of places now another popular place though where you'll see a lot of trucks park you know is at truck stops a lot of times trucks they have uh, truck stops they'll have uh, you know free parking so if you get there early enough and you can usually find a parking spot, you know, to you know to, to stay for the night. But you know, if you don't, if you get there, you know, once all the spots fill up, then you know you you kind of out of luck. So the truck stop parking lots, they're a good alternative when you can get one. Now it's daily parking. So it's not like, you know, you can get you a monthly parking spot and just and just camp out. This is where, you know, where you always park. But, you know, if you're ever on the road and you have a sleeper, instead of getting a hotel, you can, you know, park at a, you know, at a truck stop. And so I just pulled up to a one truck stop, a Flying J, to kind of show y'all, you know, how. Uh... So I just pulled up to a truck stop to show you you know how packed these things get with the with the free parking and right now it's it's only it's only 7 30 p.m but if you notice you know pretty much every spot's filled up so as you can see it's not a whole lot of not a whole lot of empty spots right now over at the truck stop. So it's good when you can get one over here, but again, it's I wouldn't bank on that and think that it's always going to happen. But then again, remember, this is just like daily parking anyway. It's short term. It's not a. This isn't like a monthly parking type of type of setup. So another option for for parking your your truck and trailer depending on you know your neighborhood you could park it at home now that's going to depend on you know your neighborhood association and you know your neighbors and, and all of that stuff but um there's somebody in my neighborhood who i see his i see the cab of his truck parked in his driveway maybe like once a month but it, it won't be there long it'll only be there for you know a couple of days or so and then he's back on the road. So that may be an option depending on where you live. But I'm assuming if, if you live in a you know live in a city, chances are you can't have a trailer in your in your neighborhood. You know, your neighbors typically frown upon that. Um so if if that's an option, you know, parking your your truck and trailer in your neighborhood may be an option, but at the same time, it may not be. So go ahead and you know and double check, you know, with your with your neighborhood association to see if that's a that's a possibility. Now I'm going to show y'all what the best option is in my humble opinion. So learning my lesson after the grocery store situation, I require like all my drivers to park the trucks at the yard at all times. Like, if they're not on the road, they always gonna be parked in, you know, my secure parking lot. Just because I don't ever want a situation where, you know, somebody steals the eight rear tires and rims off the truck and costs me another $2,200. So right now I'm about to give y'all a, a tour of where I actually park my vehicles. So now I keep my trucks parked in a, in a gated community. You gotta put 
put in the code. Got a cameras when you punch in the code. Can't get in without a code. No more grocery store parking for me. To the, it's right over to the left. You can see that's my three day cabs. And I keep my sleepers and trailers parked over in, in trailer spots. No trucks to here right now because you know they they on the road, but here's where I typically keep them. So, you know, security cameras on the poles, there's a few other places, so cameras everywhere. So, I don't have to worry about anybody stealing, you know. So, now that I'm parking in the gated community with you know, trucks and trailers and cameras and all that stuff. I don't have to worry about nobody stealing, stealing my tires anymore. So, so again, so the, the few places that, you know, you can consider parking, um, it can be, you know, abandoned grocery stores, which I don't recommend. Uh, could be your neighborhood if they allow it. You could try to get parking, temporary parking at, at a truck stop, or you can find a truck parking lot and you know get you a monthly spot where you know you don't have to worry about people breaking into your stuff thanks for watching this video if you found it helpful if you find yourself thinking man i could use his help in my trucking business then reach out to me through my website mcgillcfo.com again that's mcgillcfo.com also if you know somebody who could use this information feel free to share this video with them thanks again for watching